Introduction. Have you ever found yourself in your yard on a mild summer evening and listened to all the sounds around you? You can hear buzzing, chirping, fluttering, and scrambling in the air and the ground. Bugs, insects, and creepy crawlies are everywhere, scuttling around and serving their purpose in the buggy world. Of course, we will always delight in the obvious beauties like the butterfly or the dragonfly. That is why I've included them in our drawing book. They are my favorite because their wing display and array of stunning colors or are a piece of unparalleled translucent beauty. The ladybug and the green grasshopper are delightful fellas to observe, and the spider, although creepy at times, is always a fascinating subject to study. Her appearance often gives us the creeps, and some people suffer from fears of spiders, but books like Charlotte's Web have done a lot to draw attention to the beautiful art a spider can create. In fact, the spiders are the artists of the bug world. They create stunning compositions of symmetry and delicacy with their spider web designs. If you go outside on an early September morning, search your backyard for the magnificent webs that are spun in the night. But the world of bugs does definitely have its nasty and creepy side too. It is just fair that I included my absolute least favorite bug in this book as well. That would be the pincher bug. The sight of it makes me shiver, Ooh, and it's one nasty little fella. However, if we are speaking of pinchers, there's also the scorpion, and that is quite a threat to the bug world. Its big claws and its stinging tail warn us that this is not somebody to mess with. Speaking of the praying mantis, is another formidable predator that is harmless to humans. But watch out, Bug World. She is the lion king of the insect world, and she dominates the food chain among the grass, the flowers, and the dirt. She even bites the head off her own kind. Most insects do leave humans alone, and many flying creatures serve the purpose of pollinating our plants and our flowers, thus sustaining life and nourishment for the human race and beyond. A fun guest around the garden is a bumblebee. Lovely little bees give us honey, and we like them for that, even though they can sting you, so be careful. For some reason, we forgive them for the pinch, because they die if they sting us. We view its likeness, the wasp, in an entirely different light. This wasp is an aggressor, and known to attack humans, so we vote no for the wasp, and yes for the bee. I included both in this book, as their differences are subtle, but yet distinguish when drawing evil one of them. Then, of course, we have the janitors of the bug world. Some creepers are just there to clean up. Well, the pincher bug is probably one of the biggest contributors to a clean environment. It just about eats anything, dead or alive, and therefore keeps the dirt world clean. The ant, that's another useful little scavenger to have around the backyard. It works constantly and picks up dead pieces of wings or legs and rotten berries and fruit. However, every once in a while the ant airs its way into our pantry and it's not a welcome visitor over there. The winners for the downright creepiest looking bugs are the centipede and the cockroach. They're yucky on all levels, but I felt that they also have a right to be studied and drawn. After all, creepy crawlies have a certain kind of charm. Okay, I'm going to correct myself. The for me at least nastiest ever bug is the potato bug. I tried to include it in the book, but I found that I could not bring myself to draw it. It's one big, nasty, slimy critter of a bug. In addition, we have the pesky buggers like the housefly and the mosquito. Typically, we also feel not a lot of warm feelings towards these flying insects, but they are a common guest in our house, and it does not hurt for us to take a closer look at their physique we may be able to appreciate the beauty of their wings or their limbs. Flies actually have this beautiful iridescent green color. However, their shady posture makes them unappetizing to look at. The mosquito also has a very slouched physique and is not a proud bug for sure. It also happens to drive us crazy with its whining. Jeez. If we stay out past the sunset, we see the night creepy crawlies emerge. One kind, the not-so-liked kind, in fact, very unwelcome kind of bug in every garden is the snail. It slivers out at night and snacks on about any flower, bush, or berry it can find, and it's doing a lot of damage in the process. One does not know what to think of snails. 
as they have a fascinating beauty within their shell, but oh boy, can they destroy a garden. The other, much more beautiful night visitor is the moth. Its wings are fabulous, and you are lucky if you can catch a peek at this magnificent creature. Of course, your nighttime browsing will be accompanied by the romantic chirping of the lonely grasshopper. Naturally, bugs do not exist in a vacuum, so some of our drawings include sketches of their environment as well. But truly, the world of bugs includes the world of flowers, soil, and the sky. They all exist in symbiosis with each other, so if you are daring, add some flowers and some rocks to your drawing. Well, we may just have to create another book that deals with drawing the flowers. No matter which insect you gravitate to, bugs are fun and quite interesting in their design and their body shape. So next time you swat at a pesky critter, take the time to study its form, its legs, and its wings, and you may see beauty hidden away. The Art of Drawing Drawing is a fundamental skill for all the art forms. If you can draw, you can take your images to an entire new level by adding paint, watercolors, or computer-induced graphics. However, at the base of all art forms lays the only skill one should have mustered, and that is the skill to draw. Drawing teaches you to look at anything, be it a creature, a human, a plant, or an animal in an entirely different light. Instead of seeing the whole, you learn how to break down your object into shapes and the play of the dark and the light. Because in a pencil drawing, you cannot identify characteristics using color, you are forced to use shapes, shading, and different thickness in lines to create the desired effect. Drawing involves one important tool, and that is to be able to see your objects as an assortment of interacting shapes. Therefore, this book takes you through a step-by-step -step process in creating these bugs by always starting out with identifying a basic recognizable shape. Finding your own style. Drawing is a creative and meditative diversion. It is important to take time out of the day and just sit and sketch and doodle and hone your drawing skills. Drawing is learned by studying your subject with a critical and a fresh eye. Drawing is also learned by copying other people's work. I know that tracing or plagiarizing someone bodies is frowned upon, but in the world of drawing it makes a lot of sense because that is how you learn. Before you can develop your own style, you have to have the skills to put shapes realistically onto paper. Trust me when I say this, but the best method ever is to learn from the masters. That is why a step-by-step -step book is a valuable tool to learn all you need to know about your object you are studying. With time, your own style will emerge on its own. Everybody has a distinctive personality, and that characteristics will be reflected in the piece of artwork. So you will be surprised that as you follow this step-by-step -step guide, at the end, your drawing will look similar to the one in a book, but your soul will shine through. A diary with words and images. One of the fun applications of training yourself to sketch and to draw is that you document the world around you. In the time before cameras, cell phones, and technology, scientists relied on their drawing skills to document what they saw. This art form should not be lost in the modern world. I always take a sketchbook on my travels and paint the landscapes, the birds, and the flowers as I see them around me. I add a few words, and I love having this collection to reminisce on the places I've been. The art of keeping a visual journal is a fun way to creatively express yourself and have a very personal account of your travels or your studies of nature. How fun would it be to have your own creepy crawly journal with your own observations and your own thoughts? I think that would be fabulous, and by learning about these critters, you are one step closer to your personal study guide. And hey, how fun could it be to show off your work at the next family function? That brings me to another thought. What if the next picnic in the park turns a little boring? You can just whip out your sketchbook and your pencil and start drawing the world around you. It can pass the time and you are creating something lasting and beautiful for yourself and others. Tools. The beauty of drawing is what you need. All you really need is just a pencil and a piece of paper. How wonderful is that? I'm not a big fan of an eraser, but if you really feel you need one, you should add an eraser to your tool pile. Of course, the pencil needs to stay sharpened, so a pencil sharpener comes in handy as well. The pencil. 
The pencil is a valuable component if you want to create your drawings and your shading. To draw your guidelines and your general outlines, a 2HB pencil is sufficient. I also use it for the hard line shading technique. The beauty in your drawings comes from the play of the light and the dark. Therefore, it is great to have a six soft pencil on hand that draws a smooth, delicious line. At the moment, I absolutely love the first ride of pencil, number 4408. It is a little thicker, and it shades beautifully and smoothly. Paper. Smooth drawing paper is better suited than any paper with a rough surface or teeth. Your bright white computer paper will do, but sometimes it's fun to invest in a sketchbook or a pad of Canson drawing paper. But for sure, you can start this assignment with a piece of paper straight out of your printer. A pencil sharpener. If you choose the writer's pencil, you will need to purchase a larger hold pencil sharpener. I love the wood version I was able to find at an art store that has a dual function and sharpens a regular pencil along with the fatter one. However, if you stay with regular size pencil in any lead softness, you can go with a regular school pencil sharpener as well. Eraser. Okay, as I said, I am not a big fan of erasers. I operate under the conviction that every line that you drew was meant to be there, and excessive erasing is stressful and disruptive to the process. Just allow your pencil to flow, and know there are no mistakes in art. However, I am using eraser as tools in our series. For some of the wings, we will employ the eraser to create negative space. I like the white eraser the best, but you may also want to explore the blue needed eraser that you can find in any art store. Storage. You can be as creative as you wish on how you keep your tools together. You can use a pouch, a handy box, or in my case, a small ceramic bowl. I like it because it doubles as the trash container for my pencil shavings. Whatever you choose, choose something that is compact and easy to store. Shapes and shading. As I mentioned earlier, it is important to study the shapes of the bug that you are intending to draw. Every object can essentially be broken down into your basic geometric shapes, or at least some version of it. The oval. One of the most frequent shapes we will come across is the oval. Most bodies of the insects and the bugs, heads or the tails, have a semblance of the oval shape. So in our process, we typically start out with a line drawing that later on will be shaded to add dimension and definition. In order to shade our shape, we tilt the pencil slightly on its side and use the broad part of the lead tip to create a fat and smooth texture. Just move the pencil back and forth to create a smooth gray area. To graduate the shading, press a little harder for darker areas and a little lighter for the lighter areas. Here is a simple example of how your oval should look like while you are in the process of shading. We always create a darker area around the edges and leave a spot in the middle bit white. That gives the oval dimension, and now it looks more like a 3D jelly bean. This effect is achieved by varying the shaded areas from dark to light. For our final picture, we take the soft lead pencil and add darker spots. Here you can see the gradual transformation of the oval to a jelly bean as we add more and more dark shapes and gradiate the lighter areas with smooth strokes. In order to achieve this, you have to keep drawing over and over your shaded areas. This process is called layering. The leg. I have decided to include a quick study of the multifaceted leg of the insect. Most bugs have a similar version of this limb. Typically, the leg is segmented into three sections. The last part of the leg consists of many little components. In the book, I refer to these shapes as interconnecting triangles. At the end of every leg is a little claw. That is mostly used to grab onto leaves or grass stalks or the walls. However, what is important in this study is that you focus on them in the connecting triangles and take the time to draw them as such. Even though most of the insect's legs are very skinny, we still want to give them the illusion of a shape, similar to maybe a toothpick or the like. This attention to detail will result in better, more realistic drawing later on. We use our soft leaded pencil to darken the lines around the leg and then shade the inside. Even here, we make sure that the shading softly gradiates into a wide area. 
This gives us the illusion of depth and thickness. A little care goes a long way. Here you can study a finished segment of the third section of insect legs. As you draw the entire bug, the legs may seem insignificant, but as we pay attention to all them little details, our drawing will look more polished and more accomplished.